we're going to look at an example of a false proof. This one is taken from exercise 12 in section 3.2 of the second edition of How to Prove It by Daniel Vellman. The statement to be proved is the following. Suppose that A is a subset of C, B is a subset of C, and X is an element of A. Then X is also an element of B. Here is how the proof goes. It is a proof by contradiction. So we are assuming the negation of the conclusion, which means we are supposing that x is not in B, and we'll try to derive a contradiction. Since x is in A, and A is a subset of C, we conclude that x is in C as well. And since by assumption, x is not in B, and B is a subset of C, x cannot be in C. And if you look at these, what we have done is we have proved that x is in C and not in C at the same time, which is absurd. So we have reached a contradiction. Therefore, the original assumption that x is not in B is false. So x is in B. As I mentioned, this is actually a false proof. In fact, the statement is not true. But before we look at what's wrong with the proof, let's see how to construct a counterexample. So we need to come up with sets A, B, and C such that A is a subset of C, B is a subset of C, X is in A, and X is not in B. Now it's not too hard to imagine that B could possibly be empty. An empty set is a subset of any other set. And so if we take C to be the set consisting of the integers 1 and 2, I can take A to be the set consisting of the element 1, B to be the empty set. Well, then X equals 1 is in A, and A is a subset of C, but X is not an element of B. And we can easily see this uh, if we look at the picture. Suppose this represents my set C. Now, there's no reason why the sets A and B have to have a common element. In fact, my sets could look like this. A sits here, and B sits here, and they are disjoint. So if you pick something in A, then it cannot be in B. Alright, so what's wrong here? Where is the logical blunder? Well, there are only three lines here, so let's examine each line carefully. The first is just a standard way of starting a proof by contradiction, and there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. What about the second line? X is an element of A, and A a subset of C implies that X is in C. That's certainly true, right? Because by virtue of being a subset of C, that means every element of A is an element of C. So if X is in A, then X is also in C. This picture also captures the argument. So something must be wrong in the third step. X is not in B, but B is a subset of C. Why does X have to be not in C? Well, as you can see in this picture, I can pick something outside B, but still be in C. The fact that B is a subset of C does not exclude the possibility that there's something outside of B that is also in C. right? Unless B is the entire set C, you can always find something that is not in B to be in C. And so this is where a logical error has been made. So this proof is not valid.